just a minute while I sync both cameras. Greetings, unsettled souls! <laughs> Sam, I beat a Ganji here on the correct views. Doing political commentary for the media speaks. Wearing my liberal shirt today for liberal Loretta Lynch. I, man, I'll tell you what. There are levels of corruption that surprise very little of us. That's a given. However, this is like a whole new plateau. Laura, I, I wrote in an article that Loretta Lynch was getting a lot of um, press. Almost as much press and media time as pop bands. And she has just about as much credibility. Um... I am going to go ahead and mention this article about her. It was for teddystick.com, and I had gotten it picked up. They, they published it. Of course, I work there. And I was very, very happy to see the response that it's been getting. Listen to this. And I'm just going to go through part of it. You can go to the article. It's, a, it's on Teddy Stick. There is so much coming out about Loretta Lynch that her name is appearing in the media as much as pop stars with roughly the same credibility, too. It seems as though every day we find out a new factoid leading us to the direction of Obama's corruption. Today, a Twitter user named Missy America has shared a Fox News video featuring Sarah Carter, which sheds a little bit more light on why Obama is being called to testify by the likes of people like Newt Gingrich. I want to pause there. How many of you people remember the Gingrich that stole Christmas? He really was not a very likable person while he was in Congress. I remember doing a show at the old Sadie Renee's in a shirt that said F. Newt. He doesn't talk now like he did then. But at the same time, you've got to remember the Democratic Party didn't used to be what it is now then either. I mean, there were, there were monsters in it with Clinton, but that he was the first real monster. I don't think anybody would call Carter a monster. Uh, so, I mean, it was a different time, but he if it sounded like this... When he was in Congress, a lot more people would have liked this show. Um, and this is really interesting, though. What she says here. She points out that Comey talked to Lynch, not only about the infamous tarmac meeting, of course, where she met Hillary Clinton on the tarmac while she was running for president against Donald Trump and while being under investigation. But about a sensitive piece of communication, she says, it was a piece of communication between two political figures that basically alluded to the fact that Loretta Lynch was going to put the kibosh on any type of investigation against Clinton, she said. She also points out that she was confronted with the practice of evidence. She basically stared at him, and there was a long period, as she described it to lawmakers, a long period of steely silence, she said. Keeping in mind the number of years behind bars that the former AG could be facing with the FBI director having such a document, it can be imagined that there has never been such a silence in all of D.C. history. Well, here's what we found out, friends. It is verifiable, this document. The reason that we haven't seen it is because it's classified. There, for those of you watching the screen, look behind me. Those of you on uh, low def can see it. The document is said to be verifiable. It is simply classified. Therefore, only certain ears and eyes can be present when it is read. But suffice to say that this is far, far from over. I'll read the rest of the article. It's up on Teddy Stick. Uh, documents against former AG Loretta Lynch are verifiable and classified. All right, friends, I want to point this out. Uh, moving right along, a new cyber attack spreads across uh, the globe this is very, very bothersome because some uh, there are some reports that this new one could be ransomware. Ransomware can be really grim. It also can erase certain documents that are on the computer. Um, if anybody's paying attention here, email DJ Aram and ask him what the I Love You virus did to our band to pass in time as well as his entire computer. Uh, the word of the day, by the way, is DJ Aram, A-R-U-M, um, name of the day, I guess. Uh, leave it in the comment line, along with an address that I can send you something at the correct views of Hotmail.com. You'll get something free. Word of the day, DJ Aram. Um, the I Love You virus destroyed him, absolutely obliterated him. 
there are certain things you can do to get around it. I mean, in terms of your bank bank code, I, I can give you one free hint. Um, you get a $35, $45 piece of junk computer. Now, you'll love this idea. And it never goes online. Never, 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 never. As a matter of fact, to make sure it doesn't happen on accident, go ahead and remove all of the software on the computer that would allow it to go online. Break the online, but whatever you have to. You only needed to do one thing and one thing only. You needed to type. That's it. What do you need it to type? Well, that's a good question. You type in your passwords. You type in your banking information. You type whatever you want to on this computer that will never go online. And you put it on a notepad on the computer that never goes online. You then take a jump drive that has never been online and you take the information off of it and you put it onto the computer that you use to do your banking or your online purchases. Then, every time you have to put that information in, you do a cut and paste. Just pick up your trusty mouse and do a cut and paste of the information that you never type in. And if you never type it in, it means that keyboard sniffers can never get your password. Hmm, isn't that great? That's why you turn it into the correct views. Um, I don't know how much that stuff would help you here, but it will help you in many instances, I promise. This was updated uh, just a little bit ago. A new and highly virulent outbreak of malicious data scrambling software appears to be causing mass disruption across Europe, hitting the UK especially hard, just like everything does. Company and government officials reported serious intrusions at the Ukrainian power grid banks and government offices, where one senior official posted a photo of a darkened computer screen and the words, the whole network is down. The attack was reportedly affecting websites in Great Britain, Norway, and India as well, and at least one major U.S. company has been affected. It says the New Jersey-based pharmaceutical company Merck confirmed that its computer network has compromised as part of the global hack and is said to be investigating. They'll probably blame it on either Russia or Kim Jong-un. Um, Kim Jong-un, it may have been. Ukraine's government said the cyber attack was the biggest ever to hit the country, and an advisor in the Minister of Internal Affairs was quick to suggest the attacks appeared to have originated from... Russia. However, Russia's Rosneft, Rosen, Ro Rosneft Energy Company also reported falling victim to the hacking, saying it's narrowly avoided major damage. The hacking attack could have led to serious consequences, but neither the oil production nor the processing has been affected. In other words, it probably wasn't Russia, considering that Russia got hit with it too. Um, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security issued a statement saying it is monitoring reports of attacks affecting multiple global entities and is coordinating with the international and domestic cyber partners offering confidential analysis and tech support. Technology experts said in May that there was evidence that North Korean hackers could have been behind the malware assault that was seen uh, prior. Um, the Ukrainian Deputy Prime Minister Pavlo Rozenko on Tuesday posted a picture of a darkened computer screen. We covered that. I love when they mention stuff twice in an article. There have been indications of late that Petya is a circulation again, exploiting the SMB server message block vulnerability. The Swiss Reporting and Analysis Center for Information Assurance, which is known as Melanie, told Reuters news agency in an email. Uh, right there is a picture of the, uh, the virus as it was discovered. What can computer, computer users do to protect themselves? That's why you tuned in, right? ZDNet security editor Zach Whitaker said that it is important to keep software up to date by installing the latest security patches, but even that may not be enough. There's always some conflicting reports that even backed up computers may be affected. We'll see what happens in the next few hours and we'll have more information. In addition to software updates, though, he advised you you could carry on regular backups of your data to make sure it's safe and secure and to make sure that the backed up data is never connected to the internet, or we covered a little bit of that. You back up everything you have and you put it on a hard drive or on a computer that doesn't ever see the internet. Um, and that's the world we live in. I mean, you talk about Russian hacking and all that bull crap. Well, I mean, who, who was the genius that decided that we should get away from the paper ballot anyway? Who thought that that would be trustworthy? What's ever happened on the Internet that's made you or you or anybody else uh, think that it would be a good idea to do that? 
me. I have all problems there. Guys, everyone keeps asking about this. I've tried to cover the story twice and the computer died, so I'm going to rush through it because everybody wants to hear this stupid story. The Sun. You sexy Finn. A porn star's underwater shoot goes terribly wrong when a shark takes a bite out of her leg. There's the blood. She does look nice. I'll take a bite out of it. Never mind. The porn star found herself in the wrong kind of X-rated movie when she was savaged by a vicious shark on camera. Plucky Molly Cavalli donned a barely there on piece one piece, excuse me, swimsuit to film a shark cage promo for adult entertainment company Comsoda. Is he no? Oh. There's some pictures of the attack, as you can see there. There's the, uh, the, 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 yow, that looks like it felt remarkable, doesn't it? Look at that beautiful foot. But the shark was horribly wrong when the 10-foot lemon shark broke through the metal barrier and took a chunk out of her foot and ankle. Molly is seen desperately scrambling to get out of the water and back to safety to the crew's boat. Once out of the bloody water, she screams when she sees the full extent of her injuries. Friends try to comfort the star as she bursts into tears. I mean, it's, it sucks, especially when you're beautiful, but you could tell you weren't going to die. Whatever. It has been a hope that Convilli's risky stunt role helps show off custom-built technology to support underwater live feeds from anywhere in the world. Not surprisingly, the terrifying incident meant the shoot had to be cut short so they could dash her to a nearby hospital. Uh, she thanks everybody for the well wishes, and she says she's totally fine. It's not as bad as it seems, and it's healing quickly. The blonde beauty received 20 stitches to repair the horror wound in the hospital. And uh, let's face it, guys, I know what all of you are going to do now. Yes, I am going to give you her name again, because you're all going to go ahead and you're going to look her up again, which is great, because, I mean, I'm probably going, I haven't yet, I probably will. Her name is, uh, one more time, Molly Cavalli. And uh, she's probably seen more booty than a toilet seat. However, she's absolutely gorgeous. How can a shark just sneak up like that? This is a poorly designed shark cage, she said. Well, I guess she would know firsthand or foot. All right, guys, uh, before I get to the last story, the dumdy of the day, and you're not going to log off, you're not, I want to show you this. This that you are enjoying here is the Seacrest Motel, and we've covered this many times. You'll see a black van in there. This was dumb luck. This was how often we used to stay there back when my wife would care to take the days off. Um, that black van right there, that's actually my black van. It's hilarious. And that's the room that you're going to be staying at. At the Seacrest Motel. That's where you're going to be. And you know what? You're going to save a fortune. It's in Sandusky. It's where the races are. It's where Cedar Point is. Yeah, the top thrill dragster. The second tallest roller coaster in the U.S. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's out there, and you'll be staying in this room for a fraction of the price that you will be uh, expecting. I mean, especially considering how much it costs to stay elsewhere up there. So do make sure you check out the Seacrest Motel, friends. And that brings us to... I actually got two stories. It's not the dumb of the day. Excuse me, I forgot about this. This is particularly bad news, though. Yahoo! News. The scary connection between cake and cancer. This is terrible. Um, this is worse than the porn star story. I mean, she can still eat cake. Uh, and then again, maybe she won't want to. This is just terrible. While millions of people claim that desserts are their favorite guilty pleasure, scientists report that certain cancer cells may have an even bigger sweet tooth. And here's what's funny about this. Uh, my wife will tell me that I'm fathering her when I mention these things to her. Here's what's funny. If you saw somebody... pulling a pin on a grenade, and you knew that they really didn't know what the grenade was, but it felt good in their hand, like a big rock, and they liked that weight. I mean, they just looking forward to hurling it, having fun. Are you fathering them if you say, hey, that's a grenade, and it's going to kill you? That is what this food does. And the more it's processed, the worse it is. The bad news is that cancer in and of itself is um, cultivated via sugar. However, it grows well in that environment, I should say. However, the more processed it is, the worse it is. But I might as well get to this before we get to our dummy. 
Medical researchers at the University of Texas at Dallas discovered that one specific type of cancer, squamous cell sarco sarcinoma, is remarkably more dependent on sugar for its energy supply as compared to other cancers. Since various studies over the years have found that many cancer cells feed off of sugar in the form of glucose, the investigative team decided to examine the differences in metabolism between two major subtypes of non-small cell lung cancer, which is adenocarcinoma and SQCC. I think my mother-in-law, uh, my ex-mother-in-law died of SQCC. They noted that about one quarter of all lung cancers are SQCC, which have been difficult to treat with targeted therapies. Now, let me tell you what. I have two friends that have died of that. My friend Ken died of that, too. And... There's a connection between people that tend to smoke cigarettes and people that eat a lot of sweets. Well, people that smoke a lot of cigarettes are damaging their lungs, so they're more likely to get this kind of cancer than anybody else. And then once they have it, the kind of cancer they have feeds off of the glucose in their body. And it's the kind of thing you tell somebody because you're doing this for a reason. And if anybody's listening to me, do me a favor and let me know. I went so far into the show that no one's listening because I think this matters. I think it's going to matter to a lot of people that don't want to be on a cancer bed anytime soon. The investigators collected data regarding 33 types of cancers or never on a cancer bed. From more than 11,000 patients, and here's what they found. A protein responsible for transporting glucose into cells was present in significantly higher levels in lung SQCC than in lung ADC. The protein, called glucose transporter 1 or GLUT1, GLUT1 it looks like, makes up glucose into cells where the sugar provides a fundamental energy source and fuels cell metabolism. These results, it says, were published in the journal Nature Communications and could lead to new forms of treatment, such as GLUT1 inhibitors, along with specific dietary recommendations. Okay, that's great. Point is, until they get that, if you get this cancer, what, you think it's going to be died? Probably not by the time you need it. So, I mean, pay attention. For many years, it has been thought that most cancers are universally addicted to sugars. Yang Wan J. Kim, senior study author and assistant professor of biological sciences at the Uni of Texas at Dallas, tells Yahoo Beauty. We were very surprised to find that this specific type of lung cancer is particularly reliant on sugar for its growth. Identifying and characterizing this kind of unique metabolic changes associated with specific types of cancer will lead to the development of new cancer therapies. Again, that's great when it happens, but the point is, friends, got to cut down on the sugar. And look, man, I'm a bit tubby myself. I'm about 199, I'm 5'11", I probably should be about 175, 165, but I'm not huge. But you know what? It doesn't matter. It's not a weight issue. This looks like something that could hit even very thin people if they take in too much glucose. So, there you go. And friends, we are going to the dumdy of the day. Let's get our dumdy music going. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, listen to the lyrics. You are an idiot. Now, the, the, the dumb day of the day goes to uh, you know, Monsanto. And uh, if you don't know who they are, I'm going to make this quick because I don't want those that do to tune out. So I'm only going to make it a minute. Don't leave. Don't go anywhere. <clears throat> Monsanto is a corrupt company that makes genetically modified food that increases the likelihood that you're going to get cancer. Look up um, Cancer Rats GMO. And some people have said that this study was flawed because that particular kind of rat was prone to get cancer. That doesn't make any sense because we know that some people are prone to get cancer. So if GMOs gave cancer to rats that were prone to get cancer, then what is it going to do to us? And there's something called glucophate that is in this. Glucophate is weed killer. It is Roundup. They put it in, into the very genetic structure of the genetically modified food, and then you consume it. Okay, that's what this is. 
Well, thankfully, in California, it doesn't do a whole lot right. They got this right. This is from Reuters. California is to list the herbicide as cancer-causing. Dumb deal of the day goes to Monsanto. They vow to fight. Now, they know that this is giving everyone cancer. They freaking know this, and yet they want to bring it out there anyway. And they're going to sue anybody that tries to stop it because they want you eating it. Go ahead and try to get some corn that's not GMO corn. Go ahead and try that sometime. I think you'll be very shocked by what you see. Look at the end. I think at the end of part three from Bilderberg, Why It Matters to Me, the movie I made. We talk about it on there with some people at the Bilderberg group while eating at the, um, at the restaurant. Glucophate is an herbicide and the active ingredient in Monsanto Company's popular Roundup weed killer. And it will be added to California's list of chemicals known to cause cancer, effective July 7th, the state's Office for Environmental Health Hazard Assessment said on Monday. Monsanto vowed to fight its legal fight against the designation, required under law, state law known as Proposition 65, and called the decision unwarranted on the basis of the science and the law. What they're trying to do is push the button. They're going to give, they're really, really what they're doing? I'll tell you what they're doing. They're trying to give you cancer for the sole purpose of their bottom line, and they're going to sue for the right to do it. The listing is the latest legal setback for the Seeds and Chemicals Company, which has faced increasing litigation of a glucophate since the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer said it is probably carcinogenic in a controversial ruling in 2015. So they knew that it was probably carcinogenic, but of course they kept giving it to you anyway, didn't they? Oh, it's 2017 now, if you're not paying any attention. I know some snowflakes might not know that. Earlier this month, Reuters reported that the scientists leading the IARC's review knew the fresh data showing no link between glucophate and cancer, but he never mentioned it and the agency did not take the information into account because it had yet to be published in the scientific journal. The IARC classed glucophate as a probable carcinogen, the only major health regulator to do so. Yeah, because they're all tied to the money with it. By Kamba, the weed killer designed for use with Monsanto's next generation of biotech crops, is under security and under scrutiny, excuse me, in Arkansas after that state's plant voted last week to ban the chemical, which they should. OEHHA said the designation of glucophate under Prop 65 will proceed following the unsuccessful attempt by Monsanto to block the listing in the court trial. So they've tried to block it at every turn. So that you keep eating it like a dumb sheeple. Oh, Donald Trump is terrible. Oh, Hillary Clinton is wonderful. Oh, why don't we worry about something that affects all of us instead of just zoning out when the guy in the hat's got a rant here trying to tell you that you're poisoning yourselves? This is not the final step in the process. It has no bearing on the merits of the case. We will continue to aggressively challenge this improper decision, said murderer Scott Partridge, Monsanto's vice president for global strategy. Do you ever notice that it's only Monsanto that's saying that it's safe when every other study in the whole world's telling you it's killing you? That's why they get the dumpty of the day. Thank you, friends, for listening. Please donate to the show if you can, because I got paid nothing to do the whole show just now unless you donate. And you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. And do you know, there's almost nobody that ever donates. Almost no one. So do me a favor. If you like the show, if you learned something from it, if I've helped you, then hit share, hit like, hit subscribe. And please support me at the correct views of hotmail.com through PayPal because YouTube doesn't let you monetize anything that speaks the truth anymore. That means I'm counting on you, friends. Good night. God bless.